gentlemen uh, welcome to another webinar and today's subject of discussion is how the indian paralyzed industry is dealing with the coronavirus scare our guest speaker today needs no introduction as he's a very well known figure in the indian iron and steel industry space he's a director at one of the biggest indian paralloy manufacturing company sharda metal and alloys private limited uh, and also sharda energy and minerals limited He's also the chairman of the Indian Ferro Alloys Producers Association. Welcome, Mr. Sharda. Very good morning to everyone. Um, so, uh, you know, let's just uh, start with the questions right away. Uh, another thing I'd like to mention here right now is that all those attending this webinar can send in their questions. Uh, please do remember to mention yours and your company's name. And we will uh, try to take a few questions from the audience. Um, so, uh, Mr. Sharda, let me first ask you on you know before this before the emergence of this uh, pandemic, uh, what was the state of the Indian paralyzed industry? Um, you know, and in what ways did the global protectionist measures and tariffs influence the? Indian ferro alloys industry before the pandemic started. Okay, uh, the Indian ferro alloys industry, as you know, uh, uh, was going through, you know, a lot of troubles in terms of uh, pricing, primarily because of the protectionist measures which were there and the bilateral treaties that we have entered into. So we had a lot of material uh, coming in, and because of that the ferromanganese trade and the ferromanganese production got impacted in a big way. Silicomanganese India is one of the largest producers in the world and a uh, largest seabone exporter as well in the world. But the, the pricing was under tremendous pressure. And um, the plant production costs uh, were not you know, helping in any way because of the import duties which are levied on coke and also on manganese oil. Apart from that, there is electricity duty also on captive power generators and coal prices went up drastically. So overall, the Indian fellows industry was not going through a very good phase, so to say, before the pandemic. And uh, being, being one of the largest industries uh, uh, you know, in, the, in the world, the, fellows, the Indian fellows industry is one of the largest industries after China. We have installed capacity production of around 5 million tons, which includes even ferrochrome and some mobile alloys. So overall, the situation was not a, a very good situation for the Indian ferro alloys industry, but we were trying to keep afloat. We, we as the Indian ferro alloys industry, I would like to say that globally, after so many you know, uh, uh, impediments, we are still one of the most uh, successful uh, silicon manganese producers in the world and that that is evident from the fact that we export almost uh, 50 percent of our silicon manganese which is produced in india right okay uh, now let me ask you a few questions pertaining to the situation at hand uh, post post lockdowns and things like that um, so to what extent do you think production has been disrupted with this since this lockdown and what would be the current capacity utilization rate of the domestic ferroalloy industry? So you have to understand that the ferroalloy industry, as we all know, is uh, basically situated in three or four different states of India, primarily in Chhattisgarh, uh, uh, Orissa, West Bengal, Andhra, a uh, couple of plants in Telangana, and a couple of plants in Maharashtra, uh, and you know, a couple of plants in Karnataka. After the lockdown, I think <clears throat> uh, most of the plants, you know, after four or five days of production, when the lockdown came in, they had to slowly and gradually taper off their production. And, and, and apparently, uh, most of the plants are under shutdown, barring few, which are running on very low load, extremely low load. In Andhra, there are a couple of plants which are running. In, 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 in Raipur, I think practically all the plants are shut. In, in, in uh, uh, Orissa also, I think practically all the plants are shut. In West Bengal, practically all the plants are shut. So I would say the capacity overall, if I, if I you know, collaborate it 
uh, for the entire industry would be not more than 10, 15 or 20 percent max. Okay. Right. And that would be mostly from uh, Karnataka and things like that, which are operational or because, uh, as you said, uh, Durgapur, West Bengal is completely off. I think it's mostly it's all off except for one or two plants which are running on very low load where they have, you know, labor facilities which are inside the compound of the factory. They must be running, you know, very low loads and they must be making, uh, you know, very small production. But that will account only for 10 or 20 percent max to max. And, how, and how's the trade situation been? Uh, is, is there some uh, deals that are being concluded? I did hear of some export deals that are happening. No, practically, I think the, 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 the trade has been completely impacted, I would say. It's not that the deals are happening or anything. It's just that some people who are based on the ports have their material at the ports. Okay. Some people have the materials in transit. Some people have the materials in the port. And <clears throat> those were executed. Uh, apart from that, I don't think so. Any new deals have taken place, whether it's domestic or internationally. I think the trade has been impacted in quite a big way because there are no working people at the ports and containers and regular trade is not happening as such. Right. Uh, so how, how big a problem is availability of manpower for uh, plant operations and uh, how long do you think this will take you know, for normal production to resume post the lockdown is lifted? See, see one has to understand that the basic manpower that is required to keep up you know, the plant maintenance and basic operations and safety, security, all these things, they are there. They are coming to the plant on the senior level, on the security side, the HR side. Those people are coming because they are required. You can't just move the plant like that. But on the, on the low segment where the labors are, where the skilled and unskilled labors are required for a lot of jobs, those labors are not coming in, you know, because the, the villages are also scared the village heads are also scared. They have barricaded their villages. They said that once the people are leaving, we are not going to let them in. So these are the basic, you know, issues which are going to be there for some time till the time things don't ease out. Yesterday we have seen that, you know, the numbers in India for uh, coronavirus has risen suddenly, a very sharp rise we have seen. So maybe the sharp rise is not in those states where the you know, the plants are located, but it overall gives, it overall gives a, you know, a feeling of scared, you know, sort of a feeling which is there. People are scared. People don't want to leave their houses now because people are arguing that it's now a community spread. We are in the third phase of community spread and all. So I think labor will be a very big issue. It will be a very big challenge because a lot of people, as we have seen, as we have heard in the media, that the labors are you know, these are migratory labors. They, they migrate from one state to the other state and, and they live on, on daily wages and they live in these areas where there is work. But a lot of the labor has also walked back. They've gone back to the villages because their families want them back and they're scared. You know, so, so these labors to come back and to start working will take some time. It will not happen overnight even after the lockdown opens up. So it's going to be a slow and gradual process which will take place you know, after the lockdown is, you know, done and over with. But the question mark here is how long the lockdown will continue, how things will turn out, whether the coronavirus will be under control in India, whether we'll be able to fight it out in a very short span of time. These are the questions which will be hounding people, you know, and, and especially at the plant level, whether we are able to gather the labor for jobs to be carried out to run the plant smoothly. Otherwise, we'll have to take it step by step. Right. And, uh, you know, even uh, after production, uh, so you say that production will ob obviously be low even after lockdown is lifted because of probably because of labor issues. But how much of a problem would uh, manganese or inventory be or uh, supply of manganese or be because South Africa has declared lockdowns and Australia has also imposed internal restrictions. How will this impact, you know, manganese or supply and prices? See you. Uh, Rohan wants us to understand that out of 210 countries, almost 206 countries have, you know, got coronavirus. And these countries are practically in lockdown mode. Uh, specifically, when we talk about manganese ore, 
there are countries like Australia, Ghana, Gabon, and uh, South Africa. Uh, they have uh, they have declared lockdown, but uh, you have to understand that port operations at some of these countries are working. Okay, shipments are being done, but definitely the number of shipments have been reduced drastically. Those shipments which were in transit, you know, have landed in India, and I believe a couple of shipments have landed in India. Three or four shipments have landed in India from different places, and uh, these are being, you know, unloaded or are being stuck right now in some ports. There are issues of labor. There are issues of manpower. There are issues of operations. But slowly and steadily, I think these will be unloaded, and there will be cargo availability at least for you know a few months. Uh, please also understand that every plant has at least a month and a half's inventory with them. In India, Moyes operations are also under, uh, I think, partial shutdown or maybe quite a bit of shutdown must be there because there are seven thousand odd labors in Moyes as well, which is the largest. Uh, producer of uh, manganese ore in india and we have karnataka where we have sandhu we have odisha where we have small miners who are over producing but i think practically all these places are under shutdown and lockdown mode so i don't see that there will be a very big issue of uh, manganese ore in the near term because there are shipments which have loaded and uh, which have been unloaded in india and uh, i think once we start we as producers will also take it slow and understand what the situation is uh, for manganese ore exports uh, imports and then we will take a call as to how much load we want to uh, you know load on to our plants to maintain that supply gap of manganese ore right. um, i also noticed they've also uh, you know uh, got information from the market that uh, there's healthy demand from the export market especially uh, the far east uh, countries like taiwan and also from southeast asian countries and deals have uh, been concluded at quite high prices but you know uh, as we know that the chinese market is also crawling back to normalcy uh, could this have an adverse impact on indian exports well i think you know the chinese uh, plants might have resumed operations, but you have to also understand that they were also in a lockdown mode, and 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 they they also have their internal demand. And China was not exporting a lot of silico manganese or ferro manganese in a big way, you know, because they have uh, export curbs on their energy products like silico manganese, ferro manganese. They were importing, they were exporting a lot of ferro silicon. And, 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 and they were exporting silico manganese and ferro manganese to limited countries like Vietnam and all these places. But I don't think so that China would be disrupting the trade, for, uh, so to say, you know, for, for, for Indian exports or anything like that. Uh, as far as uh, logistics are concerned, I think we, we are going to face a little bit of logistics problems, even if deals are executed or deals are done. I don't see that there will be a, a smooth a logistical, you know, a, a chain or supply chain would be there in place because, you know, there are certain states which have got uh, border restrictions, interstate uh, transport restrictions. So I don't see how these uh, producers are going to export the material out of their state into the ports and then from the ports, another, another story, you know, whether the containers will be there, whether we will be able to ship them on time. So there are issues. I mean, deals are being executed from plants which are at the port. But can it be exported out of the country? That will be another question altogether. Right, sir. So uh, how, how are the manufacturers uh, in India going to deal with the logistical bottlenecks going ahead? See, right now, right now, it's very difficult to answer this question because, Rohan, everything is under lockdown. Only, you know, basic framework, you know, at every location, at the port, you know, skeletal staff, you know, these are the issues which are going to be there. And, and, and uh, mostly what they're trying to do now at the ports is whatever ships are there, which were in transit and which have landed into uh, 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 the ports, they're trying mm -hmm. to unload these, you know, shipments because the damage 
will be a very big issue. Damages will be a very big issue. So I think all these things, they, they are paying attention to the important things right now. And as far as uh, logistics uh, for the entire industry is concerned, will be a bottleneck, but it will smoothen out once things, you know, ease out a bit in terms of the virus care. Right now, I think everything is under a, a, a very sort of a slow action plan is there for working. So you can't really go out there and think that everything will happen smoothly. It will be a trouble, you know, trouble some time for, for I think at least two weeks, another two weeks. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, we had seen that uh, prior to the lockdown, there was a supply glut in the market for a long time that were dragging prices down. That was dragging prices down. Uh, now that, you know, demand is completely dried up and producers um, will need to combat this situation and prevent the prices from probably falling to cost lines. Do you perceive a strengthening in domestic magnesium ore prices in India after states lift the lockdown? as you're witnessing in China right now, you know, prices are going up in China. See, one has to see it from two, three different ways. First, we have to see that, you know, what are the new magnesium prices that will come in place? Because a lot of plants would be having stocks and a lot of plants will not be having stocks. Right. They will be having sufficient stocks as well. So it depends on the pricing of magnesium, which will come into play. It depends on the pricing of coke, which will come into play. It also depends upon what the demand in the domestic industry is coming up because most of the steel plants would also the larger steel plants would also be having inventories of almost a month and a half and they would be utilizing that inventory because most of the blast furnaces they are running yeah. you know, India has India has a divide of you know primary and secondary steel is 60 to 40 the primary steel production is 60 percent and you know the secondary steel production mm -hmm. is around 40 percent so I think all these plants which are running you know, on the, on the primary side, primarily they will be consuming a lot of silico magnets. And by the time we get down from the, you know, we get away from the lockdown, I think inventories at these plants will dip down. Right. And then we might see some strengthening in prices. Okay. So we've seen that magnesium prices, the latest uh, magnesium prices are quite high. And, you know, China defines these things. Um, the way they buy, when they buy, uh, that defines the market price, you know, for manganese ore. And if production is increasing in China and they are buying manganese ore, prices for manganese ore should be high. We have seen a price rise of around roughly, you know, over the two, two or three last indexes, we have seen a 14-15% uh, price high, 16% price high. And uh, I really don't think that these prices will be sustainable first. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I personally feel that the prices have to be corrected going forward. Second, I think if these prices are maintained for Chinese, you know, or, or these prices are being come up, you know, or, or being put up for the Chinese people. So the pricing will be temporarily because I think Chinese port stocks, once they are up and high, they will again roll down the prices. But people might refuse in India to buy at these prices. Because these prices are not sustainable, magnesium prices. Mm -hmm. And so people might just avoid and try to cut down on production as it is because, you know, we don't have the full strength of people coming in. Once the lockdown is open, it will take some time for people to get out of the shell of the scaredness that is there in the mines. So to get the labor back from the villages, the labor's migration will take some time, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to be an easy ride in terms of production being ramped up once the lockdown eases. Right. So I don't see these magnesium prices being sustainable specifically for India. I would say that people will take it slow because cash flow is a big issue. All, all the magnesium guys want you know, prepayment now for shipments, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is practically not possible. You know, because we've been asked to give prepayments, 100% prepayments for shipments, which is not going to happen. So they'll have to devise a way that, you know, how to conclude deals because we can't be giving them prepayments. We can't be buying ore at such a high cost where we do not know what the market is going to be after the lockdown. It's going to be a very difficult situation for anyone to predict right now as to what the pricing mechanism would be in place or what the prices would be in place. There are contracts which have not yet been completed 
So there are going to be issues in terms of the contracts as well. Mm -hmm. I was also hearing that there could be a possibility of resellers of Magnes or from China. People who acquired Magnes or in China might be wanting to sell to India. I don't think so. That will <laughs> happen so easily because Chinese normally once they like to, you know, stock up on their Magnes ore. They would like to go up to four, five, six million tons, probably, you know, because their 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 uh, stocks were not as high as they would like it to be. And in the past, also we have seen situations not like this, but uh, you know, situations where there are uh, shortages of manganese ore, or there are floods in you know Australia or South Africa has some problems in terms of production. We have not seen Chinese material coming in except from uh, Wale, which had done that once or twice in the past in India where they had you know, shipped from Brazil to China and then from China, Wale themselves sold it to India. So uh, I don't see that happening very soon and uh, uh, I don't see that coming uh, material coming in from China. Right. One final question from me and then we'll take some questions from the audience. Uh, you know, um, as a mouthpiece for all the ferroalloy producers in India, uh, what kind of support are you looking for for the ferro oil industry from the government in, in times of, in a period of crisis? So there's a long list of support that actually the ferro oil industry is looking forward to. But, uh, you know, but, but, uh, I mean, uh, to go on with that list is going to be a long, long thing here on the webinar. So, but there are certain things like electricity duty for captive plants should be, you know, removed because that's a deterrent for people to be self-reliant. Mm -hmm. Then there is also, you know, import duty on basic materials like manganese ore and coke that should be, you know, taken off, you know, because that's, that's another cost burden that is coming on to the producers. Then the retention of 10% GST payable for the upcoming financial year after the lockdown, you know, that is a moratorium of interest payment up to three quarters from private banks as well as PSU banks. That should be there. You know, retention, the employer share of the PPF account be bared by the government for the next three months. There are a lot of things like this that can be done to ease out, you know, the problems for the industry after the lockdown because the lockdown definitely is going to give a lot of pain. It is definitely going to create a lot of cash flow issues. That is going to create a lot of problems in terms of production. So there are a lot of things that the government can do, you know, for the industry, which is not going to directly impact the government in a very big way but will help the industry in a very, very big way. The list is too long for me to mention all of those things, but we have requested the government. We are continuously sure. trying to communicate with the government, trying to give us their point of view and how the industry would be suffering because it's a major, major, major export oriented industry. We earn a foreign exchange. We are a net foreign exchange earner for the country. We have exports which run into 20,000 crores. And uh, I think the industry requires the self, uh, you know, the support and the, you know, uh, and, the, and, the, and the consideration of the government. And I think the government will look into it once they get the full gist of things as to what we are going through. Right. I was just going through the questions that the audience have asked. Uh, there are a lot of questions uh, regarding what the government could probably do. Uh, they are asking for some damage waiver uh, material for material lying at the ports. Uh, relief package support expected from the government, or uh, maybe some export incentives, things like that. Um, so, also, as an industry association, we are representing to the government that you know uh, we are giving a host of you know things that the government should tender to the industry as a whole. But I think the, the government will 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 take a correct view and understand the whole thing. In, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a larger frame of picture because you know they can't just isolate industries and give them packages. It is going to be a very difficult task for the government also. But I think for the, for the export-oriented industries, the government will have a separate package. For the core industry, the government will have a separate package. And I think the government also understands very clearly that people and industries would be in a lot of pain after this lockdown. And I think the government will take correct decisions in terms of Mm -hmm. helping the industry out because it's not a question about a specific sector or a specific industry. It's a question about the economy as a whole. So I think there will be corrective measures which will be taken. Uh, right now, I think the government is totally focused 
on the on the pandemic that we are facing and and once they will be receiving uh, the the gist of problems from all the industry associations i think a, a collective view would be taken by the government in those lines yes sir so there is another question of pertaining to the ferro silicon industry this is mr a majumdar from kpmg he is asked uh, if you could comment on the ferro alloy industry in terms of how exports from india will be affected uh, because most of the exports happen to countries like italy and europe Which, and europe is probably the worst hit the ferro silicon or the yeah, ferro ferro silicon ferro yeah, but we 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 have to see that ferro silicon industry is a very you know a very small industry in india we have only two or three plants today in india which uh, out of which these the tonnages are very very small the largest producer today of ferro silicon uh, you know is 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 from china and from malaysia so there was hardly you know any production which was happening from india whatever little was happening it was happening and they were exporting and they were supplying to the domestic industry most of the ferro silicon which comes into india is from bhutan and and uh, re exporting bhutanese material was not the scenario that we were seeing in india but uh, there are a couple of producers in the northeast states of india which were producing ferro silicon and i think once once uh, the lockdown is you know over i think these plants will be exporting back again to europe and to uh, the other countries that they were exporting to provided those countries have started production of steel again right uh, there's another question from mr navin alawat uh, he's from jspl uh, how how prices are going to pan out going forward for silico manganese ferro manganese and ferro silicon as steel plants are thinking to ramp up the capacity um he is also asking what support can they expect from ferro alloy producers rather we should be asking what support should we expect from the steel producers you know the point is that we as an industry right now are not aware of what exactly things and how exactly things will pan out after the lockdown is over we have to see a lot of things there are logistical issues there are raw material issues there are interstate you know logistics issues the transport whether it will be online or not and uh, we have to see the magnitude of prices the coke prices all these things and right now they are all up so i think the magnitude of prices will go up the magnitude the the, the magnitude of coke oh, prices are already up so magnitude alloy prices have to move up they will not be you know at the 57 58 levels which we were seeing and 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 uh, you know the, the, there has to be understanding from the steel producers that the production is not going to be in a major way we will not be in a position to ramp up the production in a major way you know people will take some time to gather all the resources and put it back in the plant to ramp up the production so everybody will be taking it slow probably anybody who's having three or four furnaces would start you know ramping up one by one they will not do it on day one so there will be production issues there will be supply issues there will be raw material issues there will be logistical issues and all these things on top of it is you know pumped up with the pricing of magnesium ore and coal so you know these things will lead to a price increase how much or how big the price increase is going to be looks difficult right now for me to comment once things resume once starts you know once plant starts production then only we'll be able to come up as to what are the you know the real realistic prices that will come into play right sir oh another question we have from mr nikhil arya he is asking what would be the inventory level of silico manganese with indian producers steel producers is it higher than normal inventory level with with the indian steel producers I think normally all the steel plants, which are the last steel plants, they try to keep inventory of around forty, forty-five days. And and if they are running their plants, and if the lockdown continues for another, you know, fifteen, twenty days, so they'll be running on low inventory. Mm -hmm. Nobody keeps ferroloys, you know, stocked up for two, three months. So uh, for me, I think the inventories will be lower. Uh, this is my assumption uh, from you know. from the steel plants perspective they will not be having a lot of inventory lying with them uh, what was the pre lockdown capacity utilization 
the pre lockdown capacity utilization was close to 70 75% of the entire industry per se okay so right now it is at around 15% or 20% mm -hmm. max that is on a higher mm -hmm. side that i'm saying because i am sure that you know chatisgarh is completely under lockdown in andhra only two plants are running in 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 west bengal maybe one or two plants must be running on a very low load where the labor is inside the plant and uh, overall i think there is a complete lockdown situation so i don't think so there will be uh, you know easy production ramp up after the lockdown is over it's going to take it's going to take a little time right uh, so one more question this is from mr d chatterjee from tough group he's asking if papa is taking up taking up uh, with the government some for some relief to the industry because of uh, the pandemic like power bill discount import duty discount etc and if, if there's I, any hope of if um, apa if apa if apa has already sent a lot of letters to the various ministries in the world if apa is continuously communicating with the government bodies we are trying our level best uh, as i said that you know we are representing and we are giving whatever you know we feel is uh, you know right for the government to take and 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 and, and consider upon the 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 discounts or the duty removals that we are asking upon because india is also facing a lot of trouble in terms of material being imported from countries which have got extremely low power like malaysia south africa australia and we are facing a lot of difficulty in terms of ferromagnetic production today you know a country cannot be dependent totally on imports of of ferromagnetic we have to be self reliant which we are not right now so the so the overall if you ask me that we have spoken to the government on various occasions in fact we were in continuous communication before the pandemic was there we had taken you know a, a press conference at raipur we were supposed to take a press conference in delhi as well as in amla but which all got stuck because of the pandemic okay. but we will continue with our communication with the government on a continuous basis to help and support the industry in whatever way is required you know after the pandemic is over after this mm. lockdown is over we will be trying to see which is the first possible date that we can all travel to the ministries and we can talk to them directly face to face right uh, so something from mr ramesh ayer from icex he's, he's asking is there any case of an for an instrument that is required for price risk hedging of silico magnets for producers and consumers going forward i don't think so there is any instrument right now for price risk hedging or anything or of that sort the only thing that we do hedging is whatever we import and that to lot of companies which are exporting they maintain a natural hedge per se mm -hmm. there are no instruments and there is no paper trade per se for the ferrous industry that we can do hedging like the coal and the iron ore industry does right so i think we're good sir um thank you thank you so much for all your inputs and i'm sure uh, a lot of your lot of the questions from the audience has been answered here just see if you have any other questions we have a big question hill summer in a million link yeah what is the question i can't see the question if india's lockdown sometime do you think the government mm. set up terms and conditions to resume production for example company mask and stuff I think most of it you've already answered. This is regarding for government support and practice and hygiene and things like that. So just to answer uh, Summer's question, uh, Summer, most of the companies in India, you know, who are into production of ferro oils, they their HR teams are already taking care of you know uh, hygiene. They are also trying to maintain safe distance. at work the uh, you know the work has been divided in such a way that people are not very close to each other at the finish yards at the plant areas at the raw material yards and and we are taking proper care in terms of providing masks uh, solutions you know sanitizers uh, hot water supply for people to drink every 2 hours and whatever best possible you know standards can be maintained because please understand that people are also scared of themselves so everybody is going to be very very careful 
extra careful when they start up their plants and uh, a different perspective to cleanliness and hygiene would be in place for all the industries, I guess. Now. It is going to be a very different scenario after the lockdown is over. This uh, coronavirus has given a new perspective of people as to how we have to have the workplace in an absolutely different fashion altogether now. So I think uh, that answers the questions which uh, Hill has asked. Right. There's another question by Mr. Anil Nair. He's asking, Mr. Sharda, how do you see Indian uh, domestic demand after the lockdown is revoked and things settle down? Will steel production ramp up and steel demand will increase? You know, my take on this is very different. My take on this is that I don't think so that the way things are right now, you know, I think that it will take a long time for people and it will be a, 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 a you know, a difficult ride after the lockdown is over. Because at the end of the day, you can ramp up production, you can do everything, but where is the manpower? The manpower will be the biggest issue in terms of the labor. The labor has to be, you know, back and the labor has to be back, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, a lot of work which is there in the plant is carried out by the skilled and the unskilled neighbors. This is a very important fact that one has to remember that people, once they are scared, it takes a little time for them, for them to get out of their shell. And, and, and right now, once the, the lockdown is over, you know, the working pattern and the working style for a couple of months would be a, a very different working style and working pattern. It will not be a, you know, a sort of a free working. We'll have to maintain certain norms uh, certain uh, ways of working, which will also be a you know a change for people, and change is always a little difficult. So I'm not seeing that you know it's going to be an easy ride and production will ramp up at the steel plants and ferroloys industry overnight. Things are not going to happen that fast. So things will slowly you know come up. Uh, there will be definitely supply demand gaps. There will be spots of spike for certain you know states. For certain plants where there is no material, people are going to be opportunistic, people are going to be, you know, uh, making money because everybody is sitting at home. <laughs> Nobody has, you know, uh, today cash flows in place. So people are trying to see what the best possible things can happen, but the deals will only be executed if it's a win-win situation for all. Mr. Sanjay Jha asks, Moil has already overruled the prices for the next quarter. They've kept it unchanged. So no reduction has been offered. Um, it will be challenging. It's more a comment than a question. That's it. Yeah, Moil has not changed the prices. But the good thing is that Moil has also understood that, you know, like the, uh, the, 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 you know, the exporters of Magnesor have increased the prices of the last two, three indexes. But Moil has not done that. So that's a good thing by Moil because they understand that these prices are momentarily pricing and these prices are opportunist, opportunistic pricing. And it's primarily for China, which is opened up and China is importing right now. So practically it is, uh, you know, a good thing from oil that they've understood that there's no point of raising the prices right now and they've kept the prices intact. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of questions on ferrochrome. So would you like to take them? Uh, well, ferrochrome, I think, is also under lockdown, as we all are under lockdown. So ferrochrome production is also under, you know, lockdown. You know, slowly what is happening is that people uh, are taking permissions from the government to run the plant as per the norms laid down by the government. Uh, getting those permissions and getting the people into place also will take a little time. But I think slowly and slowly, I think uh, all the production will come back into picture. Ferrochrome prices, as far as I'm concerned, uh, will not be, uh, uh, I don't think so, there'll be a big, big spurt in ferrochrome prices because majorly India is exporting to Korea and China and Taiwan. And uh, China was already importing a lot from South Africa. So they were not heavily dependent only on India. So once, once South Africa also starts, you know, supply and once they start their productions from South Africa, uh, it's, 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 it will be the same story as the other ferrous industry. You know, it will not be a different story because majorly it is used by the stainless steel guys. And in, in India, once all the steel industries started, all other industries start, everything will start in, in line. You know, all the productions will start in line. 
So there's another question by Mr. Ankit Sethi. He's asking how much uh, time will it take for the Indian uh, ferroloy industry to get back to normalization, which is like 60-65% capacity utilization? I think once the lockdown is completely over, I think we will take at least a month and a half, two months, I think so, a month and a half. We'll all try to do it as fast as possible, but you know, we, we can't say because even after the lockdown is over, the virus is not going to go away. Yeah. So things will be a little difficult, I guess. But uh, I'm very hopeful that, you know, things should settle in a month and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another question from Mr. Hatim in Kolkata. He's asking, in the past, many of the plants in Orissa were closed because of higher power cost. Do you think power costs can become cheap now and maybe government can do something about it? But it depends upon the state government. MSME producers. It depends upon the state governments and what power price they would like to give to the industries to restart or whether they would like to offer them a price which is workable for them. It practically depends upon the state governments. We are requesting the state governments to see if they can reduce the power prices for the fertilizer industry. So at least after this lockdown, there is some relief for these guys to start back the production and the industry can overall, you know, work in a much better way with a, with a, you know, lower power cost because it's a very power intensive industry as you all know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and with this, with this lockdown and the slowdown in economy, will it destroy many small producers and only a large, you know, only the large plants survive after, after this crisis? See, there will be a, a very difficult time for people, uh, you know, who have cash flows which are not in place. So cash flows will be a big issue. Uh, it, it might so happen that a couple of plants, you know, are shut down for a longer period of time till the time they get the reliefs required from the banks or from the uh, respective state governments. It might so happen, but uh, I'm not very sure whether uh, a, 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 a shutdown of a month or two will actually kill them in any way. Mm. So I, I mean, they may be shut down for a little while, but I think respective state governments and the banks would also be considerate enough to understand the situation and that everybody is going through the same situation. So nobody would like the industry to get killed or any industry to get killed or any plant to get killed because of this pandemic. So I think there will be out and out effort from the government, the banks, I think will all be very supportive, you know, of the fact that we are all going through a very rough time and times are going to be difficult for some, some more months in the future. So I don't think so. Uh, extreme things like plants being shut down for a long term or being killed uh, will take place. There's another question from Mr. Sayan Chatterjee. Uh, he's from Sham Group. He's asking, uh, how do you see the employment structure of ferroloid industry post the lockdown? Will there be sizable reduction in manpower in both plant and corporate office levels? Well, I don't know. I mean, why would you have a sizable reduction in manpower in the plant side or in the office side? I mean, why would you, uh, until unless you have decided to actually cut down your production for the next six, eight months, then probably you will take a call on reducing your manpower cost. Otherwise, I would look at it at this way that I would like to run my plant at the best possible capacity, you know, and I would like to ramp up my production as fast as possible, you know, within the given situation. So I would not like to, you know, lay off manpower or reduce, you know, uh, 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 in the office or in the plant side. Until unless I, I take a decision of a you know six month period. Right. There's also a request coming in from Mr. Sanjay Jha. He's saying that he's asking you to put pressure on government for reduction in GST rates and duties on federal laws. So Mr. Sanjay Jha, I can only answer that we are trying our level best. Uh, there is a certain amount of pressure that you can imply. I mean, you can impose on the government, but you cannot force them to actually do it because it's not only for your uh, industry sector that the government has to look after. The, the, the government has to take it, a holistic approach to everything. And we are trying our best to get the best possible relief package for the federal industry. And uh, going forward, 
I'm hopeful that the government itself would be very considerate to understand that it's an export oriented sector and they would try to do whatever best possible is there. Right. There is a question, will there be no demerit detention waivers during the lockdown period? This is from Mahindra Group. Well, the demerit and detention is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a tricky issue. And I think it has to be dealt on shipment to shipment basis between the, you know, the vessel owners, the, the charters and the receivers. And I think that there will be a very good solution to that between the parties involved. And I think they will come to a conclusion as to how to settle the damages. And because some of the ports have issued force major, some of the ports have not issued force major. So uh, the working is slow. It's not a fault of anyone, whether it's the shipper, whether it's the uh, vessel owner, whether it's the receiver. So I think we'll all have to come to a conclusion as to how to deal with that. And I think it will uh, resolve when all the parties are together. And I think there will be a very considerate sort of approach towards that as well. Is India uplifting lockdown on the 14th of okay. April? Don't know why million links or that. Uh, well, we, we are not sure whether India is lifting lockdown on the 14th of April. As of now, it looks difficult. Uh, we have seen a big spike in numbers of coronavirus yesterday. And there have been stricter lockdowns which have been put in place. Uh, uh, some states might uh, lift the lockdown, but I think Overall, I think the central government will take a call as to what is happen, happening or what will happen in states. Because uh, if it's a community spread, which till yesterday the government was in denial, but I think uh, if it's a community spread, then I think the stricter lockdown measures would be there for some more time. Would be some more time. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, so... I, I think that it's a very difficult question to answer right now, but as of now, mm -hmm. the situation looks like the lockdown will continue for at least at least uh, another two weeks. Sure. This is what it looks like. Uh, there's another question from Mr. Pradeep Chatterjee. He's asking, um, you know, uh, EU has imposed, uh, yes, yesterday EU has imposed anti-dumping duty on imports of coal roll stainless from China, Taiwan, Indonesia. Does this indicate slowdown of white goods and automobile? See, it's already been, it's already been, it's already been said and it's already been announced that, you know, the entire world economy will be in recession for, you know, coming months. Uh, it's a pandemic. It's a pandemic. So we have to agree that uh, there will be a slowdown. You know, the markets have fallen drastically. The prices have gone haywire for a lot of things like all oil we have seen at, you know, $20 in, uh, per barrel. And uh, there will be restrictions on travel. There will be, you know, different countries will have a very different approach to this coronavirus scare and how people will react to this after the opening up. You know, China says that they have resumed operations, they have resumed production, they have, you know, gone into a full-fledged uh, corona-free space. I personally don't believe everything what China says. I think that things will be very difficult to predict after the lockdown is open because it's not about few countries, it's about 200 <coughs> odd countries under the threat of corona. And <coughs> how things will pan out, only the future can tell us. But as of now, uh, what we have heard and what we have heard from a lot of economists is that we are heading for a big slowdown, a big economic recession. This is what we've been hearing. How long the economic recession will be, how long the world takes to get out of this corona scare, when do we have the vaccine in place? Once the vaccine is, is in place, the sentiments will change. People will start looking at uh, the corona in a very different way and trade Barriers will be in place because every economy will try to protect 
their own industries first. So I think a lot of trade barriers will come into picture from different countries because this will be the demand of the industries, you know, around the globe that we need protection, we need, you know, uh, reliefs, we need, uh, uh, you know, subsidies, we need a lot of things will come into play. So I think every economy, every country would like to protect their industries uh, and their economy in the best possible fashion. And there will definitely be a slowdown in white goods and consumer spending for a long period of time. Because the overall economic growth is not going to be there. Right. How, how do you see uh, you know, prices for other uh, refactory and raw materials like you know, coke, coal, slag, magnesium or slag and fluxes and carbon paste and things like that? See, when I say that the prices of, you know, everything will be, you know, spiked up a bit because of production issues, because of supply chain issues, because of, uh, you know, uh, a lot of raw materials which are imported in India, specifically on the energy side, like uh, anthracite paste, oil, you know, coal, cooking coal. So we have to understand that these, we are a, uh, a dependent economy for raw materials. So we have to see how the pricing of these raw materials will come into play. If they are going to be jacked up, if they are going to be hyped up, definitely the finished products which are manufactured in India will all go up. So mm -hmm. I think the prices, there will be spurts of you know price hikes which will be there, but slowly it will smoothen out itself. Because it's all dependent on the demand supply at the same time, you know, it's for the finished products, like whether we see the steel prices moving up, maybe yes, you know, but on which side, on the long product side, I don't think so that there will be a big jump in steel prices because the overall economy will be in shambles and the reality sector, the building infrastructure sector will take a little time to pick up again. Because there, there are a lot of issues which needs to be resolved, like cash flows, you know, bank limits, there are interests which have been accrued, whether the banks are going to let go of the interest clauses, you know, it, it, it's all going to take a little time for things to be in place. So I don't see a major spike spike per se in terms of pricing, because there will be a demand issue. There is a supply issue as well, but the supply issue would be restricted to the raw materials that we are importing in terms of uh, a lot of energy products and and the price hike completely cannot be also passed to the consumers at the same time of the products. Can we take one or two more questions? Hello? Carry on, carry on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, there's, um, do you see mergers and acquisitions happening in the ferro law industry post uh, in the industry owing to depletion of asset value and big producers likely to expand? No, I think uh, uh, mergers and acquisitions are not going to happen. I think so. Uh, that's 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 not. I think that's a completely out of picture. Uh, you know, thing for me after the lockdown, people are going to first, you know, look at their own houses and try to build it back piece by piece. I don't think so. There will be too much of a time for people to go in for acquisitions or mergers. I think it's, it's going to be like, you know, first save your own home, then look for other houses. There's another question from Vanit Gupta. He's asking, um, don't you think prices of ferro alloys and steel will go southwards due to the sharp fall in demand irrespective of increase of raw material prices? Uh, frankly, see, I mean, I would not take a very extreme view in terms of price rise or price fall. You know, demand will be a major issue, I think. And, and as I said already that, you know, reality sector will be down, the infrastructure growth will not be as fast or as speedy as it was in the past. We will all have the hangover of this pandemic for a couple of months and uh, it will take a little time for everyone to get back on their feet, to get moving. It will be a slow, you know, sort of a game that will be played out by everyone. All the, all the stakeholders uh, who are involved will, will be very cautious because 
you know, nobody knows exactly how things will turn up because we are not isolated alone. There are 200, you know, countries in the world which are under this uh, Corona scare right now. So we have to see what will happen, but everybody will take it slow and steady. And I don't think so. There will be a big jump either northwards or either southwards. I don't think so. There will be some spikes for sure because of certain, you know, eventualities in terms of raw material pricing and everything. And as I mentioned earlier, you cannot pass on the entire price hikes to your consumers as well because they should be in a position to take it also. So there will be a sort of a balance which will be there and people will be, you know, treading with a caution. Sure. Because no huge positions in terms of raw materials will be put in place. No huge positions in terms of supply chain would be put in place. Even if you have constructed a deal, whether do you have the logistics in place to, you know, uh, uh, execute it. So these are things which will be difficult and there will be a definite slowdown. So I think prices would not immediately go down, but will balance out. Whether it is northwards or southwards, it will balance out in some time after the lockdown is over. Right, sir. On a lighter note, there's another question from Mr. Ankit Sethi. And he's, and he's saying that he doesn't want to be out of line, but he wants to ask you, how is Mr. Sharda spending his time during the lockdown period? And well, uh, spending, any, any suggestions for the fellow lawyer? Well, I'm spending, well, I'm spending a lot of time with my children. I'm trying to teach them a little bit of Marathi and Hindi. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of cooking with my children with my wife and we, we, we are actually spending quite a lot of time and, and, and uh, it's, it's quite good. Actually, I thought it would be very, 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 you know, difficult to kill this much amount of time, time doing nothing. But I have a lot of reading material, which is there. I have a lot of work in terms of uh, IFAPA and uh, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time chatting with the uh, IFAPA people and with the industry people also. We have certain issues which we have to take care of. Then we have our plant work which is going on. We are trying to see how to restart our plant and how to get back on our feet and what are the, you know, the, the, the various, uh, you know, issues at hand after the lockdown is over, how to take care of the plant, how to maintain hygiene, how to have a safe industry environment where people do not, you know, contract the virus in any which way and, and, and your plant becomes an epicenter in terms of a disease. So there are a lot of things to do actually. And uh, I think uh, one of the best things about the lockdown is it's made you humble and uh, made you realize that how important small things in life are, which you never do, like standing in a queue to get vegetables. Because uh, in Bombay, all the vegetable vendors, all the street vendors, everything has been shut. So there, every locality has only two or three shops where you have to stand in queues for hours to get food. And... Uh, groceries and, and how to live in, 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 in shortage because today many things are being given by the shop owners in rushing. So uh, it's rushing which is being taken into account. You, you, you manage, you learn, you evolve. So it's, it's, it's pretty okay, I think. We learn a lot out of all this shutdown and there'll be a different perspective. Right, right. I think that brings us to the end of this uh, webinar. I don't see more questions coming in. Thank you all. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for all your insights. And um, we'll be back again next week with more webinars and podcasts. So stay tuned. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay indoors. Stay safe, please. Bye.